classified by authority of the SCP Foundation Overseer Council. This document and all associated documents are the property of the SCP Foundation and are subject to the classification requirements and restrictions therein. This document may or may not contain lethal memetic defense measures. Attempting to access or disseminate this document without proper and sufficient authorization is punishable by death. Item number SCP-5175 Security Level 3 Containment Class Safe Secretary Class Integrated Disruption Class Kinetic Risk Class Danger Assigned Site Professional Site Beep Site Director R. Joseph Darrow Research Head J. Thomas Dune Assigned Task Force Omega-5 Damien's Angels Special Containment Procedures SCP-5175 is to be contained in Anonymous Item Locker 5175 located at Area 179. Due to the symbiotic relationship between SCP-5175 and POI-3445, as well as the beneficial nature of the anomaly, POI-3445 has been integrated into the Foundation's internal command structure. Marvel Task Force Omega-5, Damien's Angels, has been created to assist POI-3445 in their missions under the Espis of Project Secret Shopper. Upon authorization by Mobile Task Force Lieutenant Samuel D'Angelo, POI-3445 is to retrieve SCP-5175 for the purposes of carrying out missions assigned to them. Description SCP-5175 is an ornate knife of Moroccan design and unknown origin. SCP-5175 displays no anomalous abilities when handled by an individual who is not symbiotically bound to the object. The criteria by which SCP-5175 becomes bound to a user is apparently under the discretion and personal favor of SCP-5175-1. Presently, POI-3445 is the only individual capable of handling SCP-5175 in a way that manifests its anomalous properties. When handled by toast, SCP-5175 is capable of removing any form of life from baseline reality upon laceration. This effect has proven to be applicable to incorporeal beings who would otherwise have no physical presence. Upon piercing a target, a black mist will begin to emanate from the object. This mist will envelop the target, causing them to disappear. According to unverifiable information provided by SCP-5175-1 and POI-3445, Victims of SCP-5175 are transported to an unknown extra-dimensional space that has been colloquially referred to as the Realm of Unsaved Souls, Land of the Forsaken Suffering, and Kanashi Dingo no Akuma no Ryokiki, Demon Realm for Bad Apples. SCP-5175-1 is a being that claims to be the consciousness of Ko Itonkin Hanzo, a Japanese samurai who, according to the entity, was born in 1800 and served as a supporter of the Imperial Court in the Boshin War. Sometimes referred to as the Japanese Civil War, the conflict lasted from 1868 to 1869 and was fought between the Tokugawa Shogunate and those who intended to restore power to the Imperial Court. When SCP-5175 is handed by toast, SCP-5175-1 will manifest itself as an animate ethereal figure that hovers above or near the subject. SCP-5175-1's physical appearance is that of a human skeleton wearing a suit of black and purple Domaru armor. SCP-5175-1's statuette constantly emanates black mist, similar to the vapor 
produced by the object itself. SCP-5175-1 is capable of communicating with its host, regardless of apparent language barriers. Likewise, a host is capable of comprehension of SCP-5175-1 speech, despite being spoken in 19th century Japanese. SCP-5175-1 is capable of interacting with physical objects. POI-3445 is Damien Lawrence Woodcock, a resident of Scranton, Pennsylvania. POI-3445 was a security officer who had been employed for eight years at the Marketplace of Steamtown, a shopping mall in Scranton. POI-3445 exhibit no anomalous characteristics, but is considered integral to the containment and handling of SCP-5175 due to being the only individual SCP-5175-1 agrees to work with. POI-3445 has been integrated as a Foundation employee as a part of Project Secret Shopper and currently operates as a Specialized Foundation agent. See Addenda for further detail. Addendum 5175 1 Discovery According to POI 3445's personal accounts, SCP 5175 was discovered on 2009, August 3rd, at Cutley Collection, a storefront located at the marketplace that specializes in the sale of edged weapons. POI 3445 reported hearing the voice of SCP-5175-1 urging him to enter the store and purchase the object. Over a period of two months, POI 3445 became familiar with handling SCP-5175 through the construction of a training ground in the woods behind his parents' residence. As such, POI 3445 has attained cursory skill and knife combat. It is during this time period in which POI-3445 and SCP-5175-1 developed their relationship. On 2009, October 27th, POI-3445 attempted to use SCP-5175 in an altercation with a shoplifter, resulting in the appearance of SCP-5175-1 while the event occurred in public. The low traffic of the shopping center resulted in only a handful of witnesses. Amnestics were administered as appropriate, and POI 3445 was detained by local law enforcement before being brought into Foundation custody. Addendum 5175 Interview Log Date 2009 October 27th Begin Log you look a little tense, Mr. Woodcock. There's a cooler out back if you need water or something. I understand this is a lot to take in at once. This is some men in black crap. Please, all I'm asking is for an easy hearing. I can do mind games. I can do another interrogation. Mind if I call you Damien? Damien, we're not here to arrest you. That already happened, and you're clean, at least with the law. He just want to ask you some questions. Did you call my parents? I, um, no. We didn't call your parents. POI 3445 lies and rubs his hands over his face. Thank God. Okay, okay. I guess you want to know about Death Knife, right? I'm assuming the Ghost Knife is why the men in black would kidnap me. You want the Kai version or the Z version? Hey, what? Uh, short or long, it's a reference. God. Yeah, references on my strong suit. From the beginning, please. Take as much time as you need. Alright, so I'm a more security guard. Have been for what, the past eight years. I've always had an interest in, like, weapons and stuff. I have my uncle's katanas hanging over my bed. And I do pretty cool knife tricks sometimes. Watch this! POI 3445 brandishes an ordinary kitchen knife from his sweater pocket and stabs it into the table. 
What the hell do you get that? I thought they'd fit you. A backup knife. I always keep it with me. I can make it balance on any surface. P.O.I. 3445 removes his hand from the knife. It stands upright. Can... Can you just continue the story? Uh, anyways, yeah. I uh, like weapons and stuff. Here's this very really cool store at the mall called Cutlery Collection. I make sure to check every shipment they get in if they have anything I want. I was doing that and I saw this sick Japanese knife. I heard this voice in my head telling me I had to be solved of a warrior and that I had to buy it. I freaked out very really bad, but it was so badass. Like summing up the first chapter of a manga. That's Japanese for I'm aware, Damien. Oh, uh, what have we read? Uh, no, 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 I... Uh, please continue. Alright, so I brought it. When I got home, the voice told me to grip the knife in a certain way, like this. P.O.I. 3445 picks up the knife from the table and gestures using it. And then this freaking metal skeleton guy wearing shinobi armor came out. If you've ever seen Jojo, he's kind of like a stand. He told me his name was Hanzo, and he was an ancient samurai ghost. He said he chose me as a host because of my insatiable bloodlust, knowledge of his culture, military background, and years of combat experience. It was so goddamn cool. Hmm, your service record says that you went AWOL one month into basic training. You can learn a lot in a month. Years of combat experience. Well, I eventually figured out he was talking about how good I am at certain video games. Like, you ever heard of Assassin's Creed? I learned a lot of street tactics from that. I've also done Legendary on Halo 3 four times. I showed him my skills for weeks straight, just playing games and watching anime together. He thought it was magic, and that I was fighting in other worlds or something. I kind of just let him think that, because it was kind of badass. Can you elaborate more on this entity? Hanzo's like 1800 years old or something? After he was confident enough that I was a suitable host, he told me his tragic backstory. A witch woman from a foreign land came to Japan a long time ago and started blowing stuff up with her magic. So Hanzo and a bunch of his ninja students had to fight her. But she killed them all. Hanzo felt so guilty that he begged her to kill him on the spot. Instead, she sealed his soul in her cursed blade and locked it away in a chest. Things move over the years, blah blah blah, and eventually Death Knife ends up in the mall I work at. I'm assuming Death Knife is the name of the blade. I came up with it myself. It's spelled in all caps. So put that on a clipboard. I call it that because the blade completely kills anything it touches completely. And let me clarify, you haven't used the optic prior to today's incident, right? Andrew told me what it would do, but no, I never used it before today. He said that whoever is pierced by the blade is sent to the land of the forsaken suffering, like the Shadow Realm from Yukio. It's a forsaken dimension of shadows and suffering. If his blade doesn't relinquish one million lives to the realm of unsaved souls, he'll never be free from his metal prison. He needed my help to do that, and to reclaim his honor by teaching a student once again. And how do you feel about this? I thought it was a badass backstory and all, but it was way too much for me. One million souls is a lot of souls, and I genuinely don't have time to do all that. I tried to tell him I could, like teach him to be good at Space Hulk instead, but he was insistent on training me. I think it was to make up for the students he failed hundreds of years ago. And you accepted the entity's training. Can we talk about this more tomorrow? I'm really tired. Uh, sure, Damien. My team's going to run some tests on the object anyways. We'll pick up where we left off in the morning. Can I have my phone back? Dr. Trendon puts his hand up to his ear, pressing his communication device. I'm afraid not. 
And we're done. You can put away the Class Bs. We don't need them. I have to get a daily lock-in bonus. Can I have it back for just for a second? Dr. Treading gets up from the seat. We're done for the night. Hand over the backup knife on the way out. And log. Researchers note, subject demonstrated an almost unheard of level of acceptance and confidence despite being an ordinary citizen in an anomalous situation. I'm not sure whether to attribute it to stupidity or legitimate fortitude. Still, there's a slight issue. Considering POI 3445 was in possession of SCP-5175 for a period of over two months, as well as corresponding with SCP-5175-1 during that time. Regular amnestics aren't going to work here. Subject is currently being detained in cell C-007 until a specialized amnestic treatment can be agreed upon. Interviews continue tomorrow. Perhaps consideration for a D-class position. Dr. Trenton. Addendum 5175-3. Interview Log 2 Date 2009 October 28th Begin Log Dr. Trendon enters the room where POI 3445 have been reading and takes a seat. Ohio Trendon's on Um, uh, morning Damien. That bed sucked. I'm very sorry about that. We ran some tests on the object last. On Death Knife? Yeah, on the knife. For whatever reason, we're unable to trigger its anomalous properties. It's just an ordinary blade. Well, duh, you don't do anything with it. Hunter only comes out when I use it. That's why I'm the host. <laughs> I thought you guys were supposed to be smart. We figured that out. I was just informing you that, depending on approval from the research head, you might have to undergo testing. Like, dangerous testing? Don't I have to sign something for that? <laughs> oh, not here. It won't be anything too bad. Using the object on animal subjects, allowing us to speak with the entity. Don't worry about it for now. Want to pick up from last night? Oh, right. I was talking about how Hanzo wanted to train me. I tried distracting him with more games. Because technically, I was training competitively, but he started getting super serious. Hanzo only activates when I wield Death Knife, so I threw it in the back of my closet and left it there for a week. Was this out of fear or apathy? I just didn't have the time to train. It was cool he chose me and all, but I already have... I mean, I know how to use a weapon... If the situation called for it, I could disarm a man. Trenton coughs, clearly holding back laughter. Uh, excuse me. What drew you back to the object? I was leaving work one day, and I... Wait, I haven't told you about Emily yet. She works at Auntie Anne's, the pretzel place. She's this really hot goth girl. More Lydia Deeds than one of... Those pathetic Ramona Flowers pesto scene kids. Like she listens to the cure instead of some crappy pop punk garbage like post American idiot Green Day. Uh, you know what I mean? No. Alright, well, I've been trying to talk to her for years now. That's besides the point. I was leaving work and I saw some dude breaking into Emily's car. I went for Death Knife. But I was like, crap, it's at home. It didn't matter though, because I immediately rushed him and started being the crap out of him. Like, when I get mad, I lose all composure and see red, man. I see red. You stopped car theft. I didn't actually stop him. Like, he took some stuff, but I went crazy for a second. He lost three teeth, and there was blood everywhere. Emily was so thankful. After that, I realized I need to start training. I had this awesome gift in my hand, and I was in it go to waste. Let me stop you. You learned how to handle the knife, because you successfully stopped a robbery. 
I beat the guy up. I realized I could reach my full potential if I became Han Tzu's student. Are you sure that what happened? This is a judgment-free zone, Damien. Yeah. Carry on. There's a lot of bad people in this world, and I realized I could do some good with this thing. I apologized to Hanso for leaving him in my closet, and he took it pretty well. As punishment, he said he was going to be relentless in my training, but he was glad I agreed. At first, we were at the woods behind my house, but I got my dad to help build specialized training devices. Soon, I had the whole place loaded with traps, test dummies, and targets. Your parents, do they know about the entity? Obviously not. What's the point in having a secret ability if it's not a secret? I told you, I'm going for the full experience here. Right, I forgot. Over the next couple weeks, Hanzo put me through the ringer. He's a bit of an asshole, and I disagree with a lot of his teaching methods, but he's improved my ability to fight tenfold, which is impressive considering my natural aggression. I was decent before with a knife, but now I can do some serious damage. If you give me the other knife back, I can show. And no can do. What type of training do you perform with Hanzo? How to throw basic fighting stances, doing backflips by having him lift me up. I'm pretty much combat ready at this point. You know what happens next? I catch a shoplifter. Hanzo does his thing, and then I'm arrested. What was going through your head here? What was the best possible way that scenario could have played out? I was trying to impress Emily. I made sure to get him right in front of Auntie Anne's. Then I remembered it was Tuesday, and she was off. I don't know. I just really wanted to do something good for once. I've been working here for eight years. There's a whole more out there to protect, and I've never done that once. Interesting. Well, my request to reintroduce the object to you should be approved by tomorrow. Do you believe me if I said this wasn't my first time interviewing a 200-year-old samurai? Seriously? <laughs> no, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for your time, Damien. And log. Researcher's note. Request approved. Testing with POI-3445 and SCP-5175-1 begins with in the week. Dr. Trenton. Addendum-5175-4. SCP-5175-1 interview log. Date-2009, November 6th. Begin log. Ah, uh, sorry about the delay, Damien. Been busy the past week. The tests earlier went well. Let's get the interview underway then. Forgot that though, Omo Wanaidai. Do not think unhappy. Yup, I'm going to hand you the object. You're going to act as a translator. Of course. Our bond is like a steel folded a thousand times, Doctor. Dr. Trenton's hands SCP-5175 to POI-3445. Subject's pupils dilate. SCP-5175-1 appears hovering behind POI-3445. The entity begins speaking in its local dialect as POI-3445 translates. Extraneous dialogue detailing the translation process has been removed. Mr. Kuroi Tonkin. I understand I've been awoken for the purpose of questioning. Again, I thank you for returning me to my host. Translated by POI 3445 following the interview. Of course, I only have a few questions. Can you verify the account Damien gave about your soul being bound to the object? Yes, yes I can. While most men I fought against the war were of my own nation, the Shogunate would make use of the mercenaries from faraway lands, some of whom possessed unnatural abilities. An accursed girl who has apparently been lost to the ages sealed me away hundreds of years ago. Pay her no mind. I do not wish to speak of her. But know this. It is because of her curse that I am bound to the fulfillment of the land of forsaken suffering. 
If I do not relinquish one hundred myriad lives to the realm of unsaved souls, I can never leave my prison. This is why I must fight. This is why I require my host. And has Damien used the object in this way? How many souls had he claimed? One raccoon. I told him it was needlessly cruel, but Damien was insistent on seeing it how it worked. I couldn't believe you. I said I was sorry. Why, Damien? Why choose him over everyone else, especially to the point where you refuse to cooperate with anyone else? Surely there are more capable fighters. What's that mean? I fight perfectly fine. I sensed Damien's thirst for blood the moment I inhabited the marketplace. His strong moral code, his experience with sorcery. I felt it all, and I called to him. He is the vessel I required to navigate these uncertain waters. Told ya. For a while, I thought I had made a mistake. I may be blind in this new world, but I am not a fool. While your knowledge of the arts and cultures of my homeland and mastery in the commonplace magics impressed me, I slowly realized that your simulated games are exactly that, games. What I interpreted as the heart of a warrior was instead a sheet of sorcery pulled over my head. I sensed something else, the desire to contribute something of worth to someone else's life. Death alone make it not a somber lie. That is why I stayed with you. I mean, the games kind of helped me, and you even enjoyed them. You know, like all the shows we watched too. That I did. Your conjuring of moving drawings, that act as if they were players on the stage, has provided me with great insight and enjoyment. I'm assuming you're talking about cartoons. SCP-5175-1 vanishes a sword and points it at Dr. Treden. Trenton jumps back in shock. Whoa! Damien insists you refer to them by their proper name. Anime. Anime. My apologies, Dr. Kalai Tenkin. <clears throat> that still doesn't answer my question. Because I have not reached that point yet, Damien's fighting spirit came from his resilience and fortitude during training. It was his drive to overcome his desires to constantly lounge and engage in games all day that has earned him respect. What I interpreted as fighting experience from his simulated magic was instead a deep-rooted drive to acclimate to a new environment. While Damien may not be a capable fighter by any means, he is an exceptional student and has the heart required to succeed as one. Wow, thank you. That's probably the best compliment anyone's ever given me. You have proven yourself, above all else, to be a worthy and honorable host, Damien Woodcock. I'm glad to have chosen you. End log. Researcher's notes. Interview continued for another half hour. Multi confirming POI 3145's claims about SCP 5175 1 and gaining new information regarding the specifics of the object. Forwarding results to research head. There are a number of ways we can tackle this. Earlier testing with the object has proven POI 3445's incompetence with a weapon. But what you have in mind doesn't exactly require much skill. Dr. Trenton. Addendum 5175-5. Project Proposal. Secret Chopper. Dr. J. Thomas Doon. Project Overview. Secret Chopper is an attempt to expand the research potential of SCP-5175. As operating on human subjects is inhumane and resource-intensive, an alternative is proposed involving scp Beep. The primary benefits of this project are the solution to a long-standing annoyance for our personnel, as well as an opportunity to test SCP-5175 in an effective way. Of course, considering the nature of SCP-5175-1, this would require employing POI-3445 as a specialized foundation operative. I've already worked out the paperwork with recruitment. POI-3445 
will not be assigned any tasks outside of their weekly operations under Project Secret Chopper, by which exists solely to combat the excess of SCP Beep A. Lieutenant Samuel D'Angelo and a proposed small scale task force under the name Omega 5 Damien's Angels has agreed to oversee POI 3445 and their assignments. Overall, this would be an extremely limited and controlled environment. I've attached a summarized file regarding SCP Beep below. I believe my reasoning will become evident. Item number SCP Beep Special containment procedures All entrances to SCP Beep have been sealed. Research is currently underway to determine a method of SCP Beep A extermination. Description SCP Beep is a building known as the Prism Center, a former shopping mall located in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. SCP Beep demonstrates several anomalous properties beyond its ability to create SCP Beep A. Approximately 15 SCP Beep A instances are generated inside SCP Beep daily. SCP Beep A are hostile ethereal figures resembling horned humanoid sediments, officially classified as type yield Horstian class Tartarian entities. SCP Beep A possess an anomalous resistance to nearly all types of weaponry typically used in the extermination of similar entities. There are no other discernible anomalous properties of SCP Beep A, providing little incentive for further research. There is no current method of containment for these entities. Usual Faustian containment methods such as occult weaponry, pharmaturgy, and theological invocation have failed. Presently, SCP Beep contains 27,375 SCP Beep A instances. Afterward, despite SCP 5175's short testing window, I have reason to believe the object will be the solution to our problems regarding the rapid and unending creation of SCP Beep A. There have been multiple incidents over the past three years involving attempted trespass into SCP Beep. SCP Beep has been regarded as a location of low priority, but I disagree. Having this many entities with limited research potential endlessly spawning in one location is a ticking veil bomb waiting to explode. The sooner we're able to clean up the place, the better. Please consider Project Secret Chopper for approval. Dr. Doom Notice from Area 179 Director Joseph R. Barrow Status regarding Project Secret Chopper Approved Proposal approved Please forward all documentation to the appropriate parties. Addendum 5175-6 Performance Overview Date 2009 December 25th Forward over one month into the operations of Project Secret Chopper, POI 3445 has demonstrated capabilities far exceeding expectations. The change in compatibility from their first assignment to the latest is astounding. The number of entities residing inside SCP Beep has decreased from 27,375 to approximately 14,000. Official recordings of these weekly extermination missions are available upon request. The most recent operation occurring on 2009, December 25th, has been transcribed below as a cumulative performance overview of POI 3445 and the effectiveness of Project Secret Chopper. Begin log. Four MTF operatives open the sky-like entrance to SCP Beep. They begin to lower themselves to the ground using a pulley system. POI 3445 for a rope and dives head first into the building, vanishing SCP-5175. SCP-5175-1 materializes, holding POI 3445 by the shoulders and cushioning his fall. POI 3445 lands up like directly in the center of one of the mall's water fountains. Several SCP Beep A instances approach. Prepare to be vanquished by death, night bitches!
POI-3445, and subterranean entity, and pierces the beam with SCP-5175. The entity disappears. Another entity attempts to jump POI-3445 from behind, but is stopped by SCP-5175-1. POI-3445 swiftly turns around and wounds the entity. Damien, watch your flank! Two entities leap toward POI-3445. In a swooping motion, POI-3445 pierces both of them. The MGF team begins to cover POI-3445 and scouting the surrounding area for entities. The team moves into a food court area. POI-3445 gestures for the team to slow down. Halt! I'm familiar with this terrain. Suddenly, a large SCP Beep A instance burst from behind the nearby salt bar. POI-3445 performs an SCP-5175-1 assisted backflip. Avoiding the small amount of debris, POI-3445 reaches the ground and charges the entity. As he pierces the beam with SCP-5175, four entities drop from the ceiling. Damn it! They're getting smarter! An entity leaps onto 3445's back before disappearing. As POI 3445 held SCP 5175 backwards in anticipation of the attack. A fitting end for Demon Scum. And for the rest of you. POI 3445 throws SCP 5175 into the air. SCP 5175-1 catches the object and fires it from its palm like a projectile. The object pierces all three entities in succession, causing them each to disappear. Haste mine of the blade non-functional in your mouth. With the assistance of SCP-5175-1, POI-3445 walked over a gate, rushing a large cache of entities in the distance. POI-3445 disposes of them with ease. End log. Researcher's notes. Mission continued uninterrupted for three more hours. Extraneous portions are available upon request. Number of scp beep a instances exterminated during the 2009 December 25th assignment totals at 666. An intentional consistent record with POI 3445.